would like to talk to you about the work the Fish and Wildlife Commission, Matt Subaru Fish and Wildlife Commission is doing uh, on behalf of citizens to return fish or salmon to the Matsu Borough. But, you know, we're not going to get too wonky, too deep into things. There's lots of handouts. But what we really want to do is we would like to inspire you and encourage you to come to Anchorage this weekend and to testify before the Board of Fisheries. It's very important, and we would like you to spread that word to your friends because we really need people to come to Anchorage, spend that time. Uh, it's not the whole weekend, and you know, say your piece, whether it's scientific or personal story or whatever it is. So we've broken the uh, presenta presentation down into three parts tonight. The first part is I'm gonna do a brief overview of what's at stake, what the Fish and Wildlife Commission is doing. Then uh, we're gonna have some members of the Fish and Wildlife Commission, and I'm hoping Israel Payton will do that as well to just sit up on a panel here, and I've come up with some questions to ask them uh, that will kind of talk about the whole process and importance from their perspective, and then there'll be some questions and answers from the audience. So we wanna answer your questions. I'm not the expert, I'm just the facilitator, so if I seem like I have information gaps, that's because I do, but together we can all figure it out. Then the last third will be a chance for you to do what I saw you doing before I started, and that is to dialogue one-on-one. -on -one. We have set up in the back some posters from our Fish and Wildlife Commission's booklet they prepared for uh, Board of Fisheries. We have some copies laid back there of that booklet. We ask you to take those and look at them. They take some of the science and break it down, and they really present the Fish and Wildlife Commission's case to the Board of Fisheries. So it's useful information. We also have uh, a couple articles from uh, Alaska Daily uh, ADN, Alaska Daily News, the newspaper. One was, uh, and these are, I, I live in Anchorage, and I get the ADN paper. And one of the articles I, I noted was about the economics of sport fishing in Upper Cook Inlet, where we are. And that actually comes from a study that the Fish and Wildlife Commission sent money to from the state. So I thought that was really interesting. And the other article is written by four state legislators, two Republicans from the Valley and two Democrats from Anchorage writing together jointly asking for Board of Fisheries to consider what's happening up here. And we don't always see congruence between different political parties, so I was really pleased to see that. Fishes are bringing people together. So that would be the last part. Probably the most important in my mind is we do have a, a laptop set up back there because as I understand it, to testify on Saturday or Sunday, could bleed over into Monday, you have to sign up with the Board of Fisheries by 3 p.m. on Friday. I will be there at 3 p.m. Friday. Several of the Fish and Wildlife Commission members will, but it's not convenient for everyone who's working to be there. So we have a website and you can sign up uh, through our website, and then we will enter that information. We'll fill out a blue card, it's called for you, and we will get back to you like, yeah, you're set for whatever period you say you want to testify, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Sunday morning, or Sunday afternoon. So we want to make it as easy as possible, but we really want you to come to Anchorage, to the Egan Center, and testify why bringing fish, salmon back to the Matsu is important to you. So without further ado, I'd like to just go over some things briefly. Hopefully you can see, if you can't, I invite you to move forward. I was a former teacher, so I, you know, I, 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 try, I, I tend not to spit too much. So some teachers do. So uh, some introductions. The first thing I'd like to do is just to ask our Fish and Wildlife Commission members to stand up so you can see who they are. So our Fish and Wildlife Commission members, if they would just stand up. So. Uh, very briefly, if you would just say who your name is, I'll come by. So, Howard, you're first. I gotta put my hat on so I, you can pick me out on the picture. My name's Howard DeLo. I'm from Big Lake. Andy Couch, Palmer. Dan Mayfield, also from Big Lake. Dan Bovey, Willow. Shoot. Mike Wood. Okay, we also have uh, a member of the Board of Fisheries here. I'd like him to introduce himself. Hello, everyone. Israel Payton from Wasilla. 
We also have another member of the Matsu Assembly here, not on the uh, Fish and Wildlife Commission, but. Stephanie Nauer. And we have a recent uh, assembly person in the audience. Jim Sykes. Yes, so Jim just retired not too long ago from being a, a politician. And then uh, we have uh, my right hand person, I'll introduce her, uh, Carol Reese. Carol, would you wave? Carol has been an equal and critical partner in all the work that we've done. And then we have our public affairs director, Stefan Hinneman. Stefan, so behind the camera, okay. So the goal tonight is to basically show how, what, how you can get involved to bring more fish back to the Mat Sioux. That's the, the basic thing. And then the overview is what I mentioned before, a short orientation from me, a panel discussion, which will probably be the most interesting, and then a little poster time, a little time to pick up some things, to register, to testify, talk one-on-one -on -one with people, and then leave as you see fit. So what's the problem? It really boils down, we have fewer salmon coming back to the Mat Sioux. Uh, things seem to have been changing here, and what we're trying to do is get more fish back because there's a lot of cultural traditions centered around those salmon. Fewer fish means fewer people are fishing, fewer people are taking their kids fishing, fewer people are getting fish for their freezers locally, which means they either stop or they go somewhere else and spend their money elsewhere. So sport fishing has a, is a large economic driver and fish are food ultimately. The Fish and Wildlife Commission has developed five proposals for the Board of Fisheries to consider. The main one is this 133. Don't worry about these numbers, it's all in the booklet and a full description of them is back there. But essentially that strengthens this conservation corridor concept. Very important, it's basically an area that a mixed stock fishery, there are fish are coming up, different species, from different stocks going to different places, and we want to make sure that fishing there, commercial drift fishing is done properly there, restrict it somewhat more towards the inshore areas, so those fish coming up to, say, Susitna River can get there, more fish can get there. 199 amends the Northern District King Salmon Management Plan, 215, 217, 219 create King Salmon Management Plans for area rivers. I'm not really giving you deep details on this because it's in the information and you can also ask people on the one-on-ones. So some goals that the Fish and Wildlife Commission has. The key one is really enhances conservation corridor. It's been in effect. It's kind of gone through some different iterations uh, with different amounts of regulation. It has worked in the past. Fish and Wildlife Commission would like to see that strengthened and enhanced. We also want to protect stocks of concern. We like to say that 50% of the state's stock, stocks of concern are in the Matsu Basin. So eight of those 16 are up here. We want to protect those stocks of concern. We want to limit the commercial drift gillnet fishing in August when a lot of our cohos are running up here to the Matsu. And the Fish and Wildlife Commission also has an interest in providing a robust personal use fishery. So those are the four goals. So why are you the one to solve this problem? Well, first of all, the Fish and Wildlife Commission is made up of citizens who are very interested in fish and wildlife issues, and they have spent a lot of time engaging with Alaska Department of Fish and Game. They have sponsored research. They've done a lot of work to very simply provide a voice to the Board of Fisheries. But, you know, there's only nine people on the Fish and Wildlife Commission. They've done a lot of work, but we need more. And what's really key is having members of the public to testify and share their perspectives, share their concerns with the Board of Fisheries. Because the Board of Fisheries are people that are representing the public too. They want to hear from you. At one time, earlier life in Wisconsin, I was a politician. And I really like to get input from people because one of the things I'm supposed to consider are people's needs, their stories, what is important to them. And so 
the Fish and Wildlife Commission can do all this work if people from the Matsu don't come down and say, yes, this is important, or yes, we want more fish, it makes it harder for the Board of Fisheries to consider our proposals. So it's very important for you to take that effort. It only comes once every three years. And this year, we are really in a unique situation. Uh, the Board of Fisheries has some pretty reasonable people on it, and there's an opportunity to improve salmon management in the state, especially in Upper Cook Inlet. So it would be a smart thing for the public to be engaged. And it would be a good thing, it's just an anchorage for members of the Matsu community to show up. So the public is very important. Yes, they listen to the uh, Department of Fish and Game, they listen to advisory uh, committees, but the public is very key. So we really hope that you will be part of that solution. So how can you help solve this? Well, sign up to testify. It's very easy. We would hope you would consider doing that tonight. And uh, you would testify Saturday or Sunday, and you actually specify a time period, morning or afternoon, Saturday or Sunday. Come to the Egan Center and present your testimony. And we will be at the Egan Center in space 11, room 11, if you would. So I'll be there. Our consultant, Mac Menard, will be there several of the Fish and Wildlife Commission members. So that's a good place to come if you want to check in, if you want to get some help uh, with your testimony. Maybe you have some written testimony and need some copies made. So we can provide that help to you. And before we do our panel discussion, one thing I, I do want to mention is, I, you know, I'm a science teacher and I love data, I love wonky things like that. But you know, when I was a politician, I think the, the things that moved me the most were people's stories. And their actual stories about things that influence their life, things that influence their family. And so I would, I would say don't be intimidated by the science. The booklet gives a lot of information, but you know, really your voice does matter. And uh, I think if you come and share your perspective, you will be doing yourself and the citizens of the Matsu Borough a real service. So with that, I would like to invite our Fish and Wildlife Commission to come up and take a seat here, and that would include Israel. And I'm gonna ask them some questions, and then we're opening up to questions from the audience. And this is just designed to kind of get us, what, what is this whole process like? So would our Fish and Wildlife Commission members please come up and Grab a chair. Test, test. Yeah, you guys can just pass that around. No. No. Next one. Okay. Testing. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So I, I have some questions here, and uh, Commissioner or uh, Commissioner Couch has to leave at 6:30, so you got nine minutes. But the first one is, I pose this question, and I open it up to uh, members of the commission. I don't really want to drive to Anchorage this weekend. Does my testimony really matter? And and I might refer that first of all to. Uh, Israel, if you could mention that, because you've been on the Board of Fisheries for a while. Uh, does it matter? And please use uh, the uh, uh, microphone you guys can pass around. I think they're, they're both on. Yeah, thanks, Ted. I'll, I'll take a shot on that one. It does matter, uh, because if, you know, I, I've heard other board members say they won't vote for a proposal because no one is there advocating it or everyone there is against it. And you, uh, in those situations, usually everyone there is paid by some association to be there to advocate uh, to gain monetarily. And I've explained, you know, to other board members the reason why, you know, the silent majority isn't there is that people are busy working their normal jobs, you know, uh, driving taxis, waiting on you in restaurants, doing whatever, and they don't have associations on top of associations to be there. So I realize how much time it takes to come to meetings like this and to spend a weekend maybe in Anchorage, but it, it truly does matter. The board wants to hear what the public has to say. 
Someone else? Yeah, I can remember going to the uh, Board of Fisheries one year, uh, representing the Matanuska Valley uh, Fish and Game Advisory Committee. The previous board meeting, we had had uh, a pretty successful board meeting, and everybody in the Matsu Valley seemed pretty happy with the way things were going. And that next meeting, when I was there practically by myself for the Matsu Valley, I don't think we've ever lost as much as we lost that time. And Israel came in as a representative of the AC also. He came in, but it was me and Israel from the Matsu Valley. And that's really thin for a, for a meeting that has a whole bunch of people. Um, so yes, every, every person saying something can make a big difference. I'll just say I could think of 500 reasons to not do that, go to Anchorage for two weeks of meetings. Uh, but I'll just, I'll just say I, got, I have the same feeling like when I have to get up at two in the morning, you know, to go fish or, uh, or four in the morning, or fish or hunt. And you, ultimately, if you don't get out there, you don't get anything. So the whole point is getting out there and having your voice heard. So hopefully you get something out of it. I believe firmly that public turnout is an important part of the board process. And I say this because I sat as a board member for nine years. And what we usually hear at a board of fish meeting is those people that have an economic benefit from the various proposals that the board is taking up, they show up. But the average Joe public, the person that does not have a financial interest, but may have very important social issues in food gathering or taking their family out fishing or some of these uh, types of features, don't show up because they don't have that financial interest. They don't feel they have the technical abilities to uh, advise properly to the Board of Fish. So I think it's very important because you're always going to get this imbalance, or for the most part, we've seen that imbalance between those with commercial interest and those with just the social interest in the fish. So it's important for the rank and file, average fill person to help balance and provide input into why we should either change or retain regulations. And that very often is not the case. Yeah, I'll jump in and, and kind of echo a lot of what you've already heard. I did a term on the Board of Fish and in talking on breaks and stuff with other board members, uh, I frequently heard the comment, if this stuff is so important to your folks from the Northern District, why aren't they here to tell us? The, uh, and I don't want to break it down into a us versus them sort of thing, but the commercial industry is usually represented by in the hundreds of people that are present at these meetings to testify and find out what's going on. Um, a lot of times if the Valley and Anchorage can uh, recruit as many as 50 to show up during these meetings, that's for a lot of guys that have been doing this for a while, that's kind of a major gain. That's, that's a holy cow, look at all the people we got showing up for our side. Um, there are board members, theoretically they're not supposed to do it, but in reality, they'll look out at the audience and they'll say, 200 people over here do or don't want this. 10 people over there do or don't want this. I wonder which way I'm gonna vote. And I'll just add, uh, <clears throat> a couple years ago, I was assigned to work on a borough issue regarding air quality. January of 2018, I had to do a presentation to the uh, Matsu Assembly, and it was a hot issue, and a lot of people spoke against the proposed uh, legislation. No one spoke for it. It had zero report, support, so it, I think that's key, so thank you. Uh, number two, I don't really understand the science, so what should I talk about if I testify? Well, I'll, I, since I got the microphone, I'll start. Uh, you want to talk about how this stuff impacts you and your family personally. That's probably the most effective type testimony. Um, again, when I was on the board at the Bristol Bay meeting, 
there were some contentious issues being discussed and a young native gentleman got up to testify and he didn't talk about the science, he didn't talk about the socioeconomic specifically, he got up and read a poem that he had written about the, the customary lifestyles and how some of these changes were affecting his life, his family's life, his village situation. I mean, it was beautifully done. That's all I can say. And when he finished, he got a standing ovation from everybody in the room, including the board members and all the Fish and Game support staff, because nobody had heard anything like that in a long time. And I think that had a tremendous effect on how the board ultimately voted on that particular proposal. So uh, talk about what you know. Talk about how it affects your kids. Talk about how you haven't been able to go fishing for X number of years because it just hasn't been worth your while to go uh, for lack of fish, what it, whatever. But keep it personal and talk about how these things affect you and your family. Yeah, that was really good advice. I also help board members understand, like, if you know an area really well, most of the board members are from uh, across the state, you know, Petersburg, Bristol Bay, so they're not as familiar with your area as you are. So help them understand the nuances of your area, uh, you know, and how that relates to you and the resource and basically, you know, help them understand your perspective uh, the geography, you know, how you utilize the resource or how basically how you'd like to utilize the resource more or less or the problems you see in your area or maybe the solutions, things like that. Okay. Number three, give me some details about testifying, like the length paper copy, you know, essentially what kind of tips or tactics could I use? You know, how long do I have? And, you know, I get nervous with a microphone. Most people do. I don't, but most people do. So what, how can I work through that? What, what would help me? Because I, I go to assembly meetings and people have three minutes and they're constantly overusing their time and they don't hear every, the, the, the assembly doesn't hear. So what, what kind of tips would you give people? Yeah, the, the three minutes, I've sat on both sides of the table, and so I'm up there in front of the board, on the board, and, and I'm always nervous too, so don't worry about being nervous, but the three minutes goes by very fast. So I tell people, if, if, if you're just going to testify the, you, and use the three minutes, try to use it all, and, and either if you're supporting a proposal, get to that point, or just tell us your perspective. There's another time in the board meeting, if you so choose to use, uh, called the Committee of the Whole. And that's, there's no time limit on it, it's just an open forum. The board members sit up here, you guys are in the audience, and the mic gets handed around. And that's where you really talk about the nuances and the details of the proposal. It's hard to cram that in your three minutes. If the three minutes is your only option, and that's what you wanna do, I would utilize it that way, but if you're gonna commit to a proposal you really care about, I would suggest staying for the committee of the whole and using your three minutes to tell the board who you are, what you like to do, kind of the human aspect of it, and then use the committee of the whole work to really get into either the science or the allocation or the nuances of the proposal. And for the three minutes, some people read off a sheet, some people can just have an open conversation with the board. Just do whatever you're most comfortable with. And you don't have to use the three minutes. You can literally get up there and say, I would like to see more fish in my streams. Something simple like that and say, that, that's all I have to say. Please make it happen next. You know, it, it can be really simple. And Andy, you had to go soon. Did you wanna have a last word on that before you go? Sure, so um, another thought there is the written written copy. You can bring what's called an RC, record copy. Uh, they're gonna want you to have how many copies this time? Was it 20, 21? So you'd wanna have it copied before you take it down there. But if you had your testimony, if you wrote it out, if you got nervous, 
if you didn't get everything you wanted to say done in three minutes, it's right there. And uh, uh, the board can uh, look at it later. Or if they, they can recall something, that guy, he, he, that guy or gal, they had something I want, I, I want to look back at, you know, and there it is. If you just do your uh, spoken testimony, if you don't get to something, it's not on the record. Uh, if you, uh, if a board member forgets it, it's gone. You know, if, what was that they were trying to say? If you're not around to ask, they might not remember it. So I always like to do the, the record copy myself. When you do that, um, you, you hand it in up front. You want to hand it in as soon as you get to the meeting. And they'll give you a number. And then when you go up to testify, you would, you'd say, uh, uh, I'd refer uh, board members to record copy number, whatever it is you, your record copy was. Usually the, the board does not start your three minutes. If you turn that thing in, early enough, they have the record copies in their books and they'll turn them, turn to them before they start your three minutes. So that's just kind of little ways to, to do that. And you can submit record copies even if you miss the opportunity for the public testimony. You can still submit record copies all the way until they act on whatever proposals you might be interested in. So it sounds like, you know, bring 25, then you're covered, you got your thing and you can submit that, they have staff there, and then it's a record, you get a number, you can refer to that, and it kind of really extends your power, so. I have a quick question. For the veterans of the Board of Fish here, in, I'm in the midst of, if you can't testify on Saturday and Sunday for the public testimony, can, can if somebody was there and could text you from, from Anchorage and you're in Talkeena, can you show up and, and participate in that committee as a whole? So that way you can comment specifically on a proposal and how that affects you. Yeah, so, and that's why if, if you really wanna dig into a proposal and advocate for one, you, the agenda is posted online and you can kind of see, you know, it moves around a little, but you can see the, the proposals are grouped by type and they're on the agenda. And yeah, you can come in at any time during the meeting and participate in basically committee of the whole. Once again, it's an, just an open forum. And if you're not comfortable speaking publicly, it's perfectly appropriate to talk to staff and board members during breaks. I encourage people to introduce themselves to board members. All board members are very friendly and take the time. They wanna know who you are and what you have to say even in privately on, on breaks. That's where a lot of, you know, uh, networking happens. And uh, yeah, I encourage people to do that. Yeah, quick comment. And I'm actually, as I look at the list of questions, I'm kind of drifting into the next one. Um, in your three minute public testimony, be absolutely as specific as you can. Uh, don't go in there and say, Oh, I support number 133, but I don't like 217 and I don't like 306 or whatever. The board understands likes and dislikes, but they want to know why you don't like it, why you do support it. So you would actually be very smart to be very specific in your three-minute testimony, uh, if at all possible, limit it to one proposal and then it give, you can give them an explanation why you support or don't support it. You might get two in. If you're from New York, you might get three of them in. I don't know. But uh, you wanna be specific and then like Israel said, you can really elaborate when you get into the, the committee of the whole. Um, he used the term open forum. I, I'm probably more familiar and would use the term town hall meeting is what it's kinda like. Everybody gets to participate. Another uh, thing I've seen used very effectively to get maximum benefit in your three minutes of testimony is to have, if you have them, daughter, son, sit right next to you when you're testifying, or in my case, grandkids, and then tell them that the board, as you're telling them that, we need to do something about this declining run. It's having a major impact on my family and go on, and that works well, and if you've got kids that are able to do so, just a quick, uh, please do this board of fish if that sort of stuff. It really grabs a board of fish member's attention. So, 
just another trick or procedure you might want to use? So a couple things I, I heard. I think we answered, can you bring your kids? And uh, yes, and it, it could actually be quite effective. I know when I was a politician, when kids spoke, that had a big impact on me. I'm a former teacher, so I listen to kids, and they are the future. Mm -hmm. The other thing I heard, I heard Israel say this, I think, that it's not just testimony. It's also going up and talking to the Board of Fisheries members you know, on their breaks. And uh, I, you know, I know when people talk to me, when they're nice to me, I'm nice back. So you know, I would encourage everyone to be respectful. And the other thing is, you see Israel here, and you might naturally go talk to him and no one else on the Board of Fisheries, but there are six other members besides him, and he is from the area and probably pretty well understands our issues. So I would encourage you, before you talk to him, to talk to someone else. And the other thing is, I'll be there, many of our Fish and Wildlife Commission members are there, and you can seek out these guys and gals, and you can say, hey, can you introduce me to some of these people? And that, that can be really effective, that personal thing of saying, hi, I'm so-and-so, and I'm going to be speaking, or I spoke, or you know, this really matters to me, it can be very effective, I think. So, so we we'll skip kids. Uh, number six, I, let me take that one. Where can I get help if needed at the Egan Center? Well, I said that uh, the Matsu Pearl is uh, renting a space, space 11, room 11, with um, Kenai River Sport, and Fish, Sport Fishing Association, we share the cost of that. So you can always come down to Space 11. Uh, I should normally be there. We have a consultant named Mac Menard. Uh, you will also oftentimes see Fish and Wildlife Commission members there. So that's where you can get some help if you need some help. And at the end, I will have my borough cell phone. So I encourage you to write that down. And uh, feel free to text me anytime. I'll be at the most of it. Uh, RC is a record copy, and I think uh, that is a document you give, just bring 25 copies and you're safe. You got something for yourself, and that's a way for you to get your comments on the record rather than just depending on the verbal part, which means you can get cut off. And, you know, let's face it, they're going to hear lots of testimony, and, you know, if you have a, if they have a piece of paper because you've already submitted it, and you do a bang-up job, you know, I might put a smiley face if I was a board a fisheries person and come back to that because like yeah, that impressed me. So unless there's anything else on RC. Yeah, I want to go back to the bring your kids thing real quick. Um, a lady who's a former commission member, uh, she resigned basically because she and her husband were starting a new family. Uh, but at the time she had a couple of early teenage stepdaughters, I believe were her husband's, but uh, and she and her husband had written a proposal asking the board to establish a youth fishery. I think it was down on Fish Creek for Coho, but I don't remember the exact details. Well, she brought her kids in, the daughters, and she had the daughters testify why this would be important to them. And you talk about having an effect on board members that passed unanimously, no problem. So if your kids relate into what you want to testify about, uh, by all means, bring them. And if they're old enough and good enough to maybe trust them with the microphone for a little bit of your time, let them tell the board why they want to see this or that or whatever. So. Okay. Yeah, I'll, <clears throat> I'll follow up on a couple of things. Uh, where can I get help at the Egan Center? So board support. Uh, they're basically, uh, they'll be at the front table and they handle all the blue cards and they receive all the RCs that the public gets in. They, they organize it all and they are a great bunch of people and very helpful. So if you have any questions on the process, uh, board members are willing to help, Department of Fish and Game staff is willing to help, but board support is the, probably the best initial point of contact to go to. That they're the ones that submit what's called these blue cards, and there's a stack of them in the back. And this is a little bit new this year, and I'll just kind of go over the blue card uh, thing. Uh, the board implemented it. Uh, the way it worked in the past, you signed up the blue card, and you might have been one of 250 people testifying, so you have to sit around for maybe Saturday, Sunday, Monday maybe, until your 
name is drawn. So we don't know how it's people can fill in a time block and that's their first or second choice. It's on the back. And if you don't do a time block, uh, you just default to kind of the old way. And to get a time block, it is before 3 on Friday, but if you just show up Saturday morning and sign up before 10, you go to kind of the old way, which is fine too. So if you're willing to put in the time and spend a couple days, that, that works too. But the blue card is really simple, just who you are and uh, that you want to testify. You can fill them out in the back or... Uh, you know, and leave them here, and either I or a member of the commission can and hand them in Friday. And uh, just please, if you do fill one out, please show up. But uh, they're really simple. The RC, yeah, basically it's just something on record that you want everyone in the board and public to see. It can be a picture of you holding a fish. Simple as that. We get, it's everything from 150 pages of scientific data to someone holding a, a fish and their family having fun. You got to be cognizant the board has a lot going on during the meeting. So the 100 pages, we probably don't have time to read. So RCs are usually real effective if they're a really specific data point that you want to refer board members to in your testimony or in the committee of the whole. Like, hey, look at this data right here. It's an RC 13. Would you please turn to that? You know, and this is why I want this proposal to pass because the data in RC 13 shows that it should or, or whatnot. So that, that's really the, how you use the power of the RC is to get the information that strengthen, strengthens your narrative in front of the board so that, and you can speak to it while the board's reading it. Uh, and then how can I get my written comments submitted at this date, late date through an RC? You know, if you missed out the written comment period, you just make the copies, you hand it to board support, and it, it goes in our book. Okay, thank you. And then the last one, I, let me paraphrase this if I could, and, and you all can jump in on that if needed. What's the committee of the whole I see on Monday's agenda? So the agenda is tentative, it's online. So Friday, the meeting starts at 8.30. And it's kind of a boilerplate day. There's staff reports and there's ethics disclosures. And of course, the very important uh, testimony sign up by 3 p.m., which you can do through us. Uh, we will fill out those blue cards for you if you go to that web page I showed you before and preferably sign up before uh, you leave tonight on our computer back there. The, um, on Monday, they start this Committee of the Whole, and they have the proposals in groups. And I believe there's six groups, five groups, something like that. Seven groups. Well, I, I know that our Proposal 133, which is the Conservation Corridor, is in Group 2. So you might come down on Monday, and you might participate in that town hall. It's another opportunity for you to speak. And then I think our other proposals are in Group 5, which is the following weekend after this first weekend. Uh, even though you can testify on anything, the testimony is really Saturday and Sunday bleeding into Monday if needed. So that's kind of a nice overview. We'd like to open it up to audience questions. We'd like you to use the mic because it's being taped. So is there anything you would like to uh, ask of our p panel before we kind of uh, move to the third and final phase, which is one-on-one -on -one conversations? Anyone? This is practice for your testimony. Hi, I'm Chris Oganowski. I have a couple of proposals uh, that are coming up on the 12th and 15th. Am I supposed to comment at that time when they're spoken about? Yeah, thanks, Chris. So, yeah, it, it's always good to come in for public testimony and just give give your kind of you know say you have some proposals in there and kind of give your your personal story. Uh, and if you have time to advocate your proposals, the committee of the whole is where you do it, and I would strongly suggest you do. So a little bit about the committee of the whole and the proposals. So I, I understand one of your proposals is on personal use fishing, and there's three or four or five other ones like that. Just like in the book, there's multiple of similar proposals. The board will usually latch onto one of them, and it's called a driver. 
and then they'll usually vote on that, and then the rest will kind of will take no action on either, uh, or vote them up or vote them down. A lot of them no action because the action we took on the driver, if you will, and that's where I see where the committee of the whole really comes in. So we we hear all the testimony. And then the committee of the whole starts, and then we get into the nuances of the proposal. And one thing we didn't hit on is called substitute language. Most proposals that pass, pass with substitute language. And that is a board member picks it up, champions it for whatever reason, tells the Department of Fish and Game, like, I need some language changed in this to get it to pass. And then it, it passes. We amend the proposal with substitute language. And the ideas usually come out of the committee of the whole. For example, proposal like on a personal use fishery, one of yours that you put in, I think it's 235. So pretend this is committee of the whole. Usually the proposer will get the first opportunity to go at it. You know, I wrote this proposal because, why? I think it's because, good. And then, okay, next. And the, there'll be an opposing view almost always. They'll say, well, we don't like it because of this. And then it kind of some back and forth. And that's where the board tries to find some common ground between maybe the opposition and the support. So then we'd be like, well, the board's hearing kind of, you know, some people are concerned about maybe it's too long or too many days of the week. You know, what about paring it down to less time or less area or whatever? <laughs> it's like, oh, I could live with that, you know, and maybe they could live with it too. So find some agreement there and then the board tells the department, and sometimes the department works with the stakeholder, but a lot of times it's the board member in the department, say, yeah, I, I, I wanna change it. I heard this in the committee of the work. How about we write it up uh, in better let regulatory language? Because sometimes these proposals are conceptual too. These ones are actually really good regulatory language wise. Some are real conceptual, so you need the regulatory language anyway. But the department will write it up, uh, and that's, a, a product of committee of the whole, really finding a, a compromise or, or better regulatory language, the department will write it up, and then when it comes to deliberations, the board will say, I'm gonna substitute uh, this language for the proposal, and now we're gonna debate this kind of new language. And if you wanna be involved in what that language says, you wanna be there at the committee work. Excellent, someone else in the audience with a question? Or comment. So, uh, does the does the board pretty much and the committee of the whole pretty much stick with the uh, agenda in the time? We try as much as possible. Uh, last uh, meeting, there were some act of God things happened, like board members' families died, and just some really wonky stuff. So the agenda did get shifted dramatically a, a couple a couple years ago at a meeting. Uh, typically, yeah, we, we stick to the agenda pretty dang good. Uh, you'd be surprised how well uh, we can time things. But you wanna watch it, you know, you wanna you keep your pulse to it, yeah. Another thing that wasn't really mentioned here is what the board actually does. The board is charged with conserving and developing fisheries and making allocative decisions. Some people call those political decisions, but they are allocative decisions. And what does that mean? Allocative is basically dividing up the pie and sharing the resource between the different users of Alaska. And the reason why the board does it and not the Department of Fish and Game is the Department of Fish and Game is neutral on allocative decisions. The board decides basically who gets what and where based on a variety of reasons. We have an allocation criteria and then we implement it and decide and the department follows through with that. So one of the things people need to really say in their public testimony is, you know, if something's allocative, why it should be changed. Population growth, economics, need more of the resource. That's what the board is supposed to do. The board is charged with allocating based on those criteria. And unless we hear from people that maybe want another percent of the resource, and they're not getting it currently, you know, that's what we're supposed to do. That's, that's why there is a board of fish, is to allocate. It's as simple as that. Fascinating. Anyone else? Mr. Sykes. 
Well, I just wanted to know if you've got <coughs> a, a family or friends that share your same concern, could you have them testify? Uh, if, if everybody has sort of the same script, you can use your th three minutes and the next three minutes if people sign up together sort of serially. And then you could also invite them to the committee as a whole. Is that correct? Yeah, so uh, an effective technique I've seen before in using that three minutes is maybe uh, three or four people get up there. And you're allowed to do PowerPoint presentations. It says right on the blue card, you just need to get let board support, give them a heads up to load it on their computer and all that. But what I've seen real effective testimony is a group or, uh, you know, four or five people, they all sign up together, and then they segue into it, like my three minutes is up, and then you know pass the, the baton to the next. So you get maybe 10 minutes on, on whatever you want, and it's not all chopped up between different times. So it is uh, a very effective technique I've seen to utilize it that way. The committee of the whole works a little different because the committee of the whole is the board members each chair it differently, so we all take turns chairing the different committees. And basically, people just raise their hand, and board members try to be diverse in who they're picking. So if you're all sitting together and all raising your hand, usually a board member won't go one, two, three, four, five, and committee the whole. They try to get uh, different points of view, a tit for tat, if you will. It, that's just my, been my observation in committee of the whole. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, my name is Dan Suprak. Um, where is the agenda? Is, is, is that on the computer? Can you find it there? And is each proposal have its own time throughout the day? So the agenda is on the Board of Fish website. Yep, and that's under the regulations link. And some the board of the Fish and Game website's a little difficult to navigate sometimes, but as soon as you get dialed into it, it's it's pretty easy. But they'll have the groupings, and they'll list what those groupings are. So it'll so day one Friday is like staff presentations. Day Saturday, Sunday, I believe, says public testimony, and maybe Monday continued. And then Monday, uh, Committee of the Whole One, and it lists basically what's in Committee of the Whole One, all the proposals. And the way the roadmap was set up is, yeah, th they're listed, and they were set, uh, prioritized, for whatever reason, a certain way. And then it'll, you know, committee of the whole one might last a day or half a day, and then it goes committee of the whole two, Tuesday, committee of the whole three, and then we deliberate on it. We don't do all the committees. Sometimes we'll stop and deliberate and vote on like the first three committees. That way it's still fresh in our mind, right? So if we heard something on day one, it's probably not good to deliberate on it on day 13. So we kind of break it up that way. And it's all on the roadmap and the agenda. The roadmap is kind of how the committees are set up, and then the agenda is an overview of the roadmap. So it, it's a good read, and it'll really help you understand uh, how it's going to flow. So, and it'll show, you know, if you're really specific on one or two proposals, yeah, you can pick out which day you think it's going to bracket and kind of keep track of it that way through, through it, the roadmap and the agenda. Yeah, and those are the two documents I've looked at. Uh, the agenda and the roadmap. I group two, yeah. And then our other proposals are in group five. <coughs> and so if you go just Google Alaska Board of Fisheries, uh, it would take you to the page. It is a little bit, you know, obtuse. And then you just simply uh, look for the Upper Cook Inlet Fin Fish Meeting. Uh, it should be at the top. And the agenda should be the first thing when you open that up. And then the roadmap. And then they have well, about 1,200 pages of additional documents you can can look at if you want. But those first two are the, the main things. Uh, anyone else? Lord. Yeah, I just want to make a quick comment. Um, normally, if everything goes right, they stream the board meeting on the Internet. And if you're not able to be there that day, but you want to know what's going on, or whatever you can uh, tune in on your computer and literally listen to the meeting as it's happening now you can't comment or anything all you can do is listen but at least you can find out what's going on which is another way of staying in touch so if 
you come down this weekend and you're working during the week and if you can listen to uh, streaming stuff at work or you know it might be very interesting so I would ask that you share this information with the, your friends and family and get the word out I did want to mention the, the final phase so uh, I did want to mention some of the things that are out in the back so this little one sheet page is an ad that uh, Stefan developed and it has the website on the bottom that we will have uh, on our laptop and I'm going to ask Carol if she can uh, be at our laptop and if you want to sign up to testify you can do that today and what that does is then we get that information and we'll fill out a blue card for you and submit it by Friday 3 p.m. so you'd want to do it like you know before Friday 3 p.m. but as was said if you do sign up to testify please show up and testify that's fairly important uh, if you don't want to use the uh, internet and give us your information, I think Carol has some blue cards. So you can do it the old analog way and just fill it out. And uh, that will go down with me on Friday and I will put your submit your card. So no input. And I think that's most of it. I, I did want to mention <coughs> uh, Israel had done a data request from uh, Department of Fish and Game. And so that is back there and it's it's kind of interesting there's a lot of information there but uh, if you flip it over uh, there's a really interesting couple interesting pie graphs this one shows uh, I put this on the back so it's easy to see who is catching Susitna sockeye so that's an interesting thing uh, I think I heard Israel mention you know how f how big a community you live in so we have uh, census data about how big the Matsu borough is population wise so on and so forth. So there's some really, even though the front is kind of uh, word heavy, there's some really interesting graphics. And that's stuff that you can use in your testimony. You know, that's data. Uh, there are a couple articles from Alaska Dispatch News I mentioned. And then, of course, the booklet. So I would encourage you to pick those up. And I would encourage you to write down my MSB cell phone if you th will think you may need assistance. So it's 907, it's the bold black one, 795-6281. Uh, if you send me a text or try to call me late at night, I, I turn my borough cell phone off when I'm not working. But I'll be at the meeting uh, every day other than uh, the last weekend. I'm going on a date with my wife for President's Day weekend, so. I apologize. So if you <laughs> try to contact me the second Saturday and Sunday and say, <laughs> where is that guy? Uh, I'm out of cell range, so I, I apologize. But anyways, hopefully you, if you come, you'll make some contacts. And you know, I, I would encourage you to you know, consider not just the formal testimony, but the informal, good old, hi, my name is this, and I care about that. Look somebody in the eye, shake their hand, and uh, I know when I ran for political office, I think I got elected because I went to doors and did that. And people were able to take a measure of me, and I was able to shake their hand. And magical things happen when that happens. So um, I would leave it at that. And then uh, I do want to just mention what's back here. So we have various posters. I'm probably going to be standing by the eco economics of sport fishing because I'm not an economist, but... Uh, I, I can make sense of that data for you. Uh, we have some coffee and water for you. And then we have our computer if you want to sign up uh, with the internet for testimony or if you want to do the old-fashioned way, see Carol. So with that, if there's no questions, uh, yes, Jim. Well, I have a comment in terms of Talking with people, if you can't think of your friends or neighbors who might be interested in this, think of people you might know who run a bait shop, a grocery store, a B and B, uh, a, a boat uh, uh, for to get people fishing, whatever it is. Or if you just know that somebody uh, uh, depends on it for their food, uh, that's that's all, it's all important. Uh, so I, I would encourage you to just think beyond your friend, family, and neighbors to people who depend on it in other ways than you do. And if you think this is important, please uh, put it on your social media feeds. Those things really 
get out there. If you're going down or if you thought this was a good meeting or if you thought it was a bad meeting, put it on your social media feed and let people know that you're, you care about fisheries and uh, you know, put that website on there. You know, that maybe you can't make it to testify, but maybe you can encourage somebody on your social media feed to maybe testify. And you can always give them my phone number and they can ask me, I'm very helpful. And I think Israel had a comment. Yeah, just to piggyback on kind of what Jim said. And then to let people know, all board members on their members profile, it's a, you know, to understand who the board members are in background too is, is kind of key. There's a members profile, it gives a little bio on them, but now we have all put public websites on that. We all have a state of Alaska email. And so you can contact board members directly. But, you know, I know we all have friends and know people that like to complain about the fishing and, you know, fishing games doing this, fishing games doing that. Fishing game is just telling, doing what seven people, i.e. the Board of Fish, is telling them to do. So when people complain about it, you need to call them out on it and say, well, did you go down to a Board of Fish meeting and get your voice heard, or were you, are you being a victim? It's simple as that. Now's the time to do it. The department's just doing what seven people told them to do through what we hear, through the public process, and trying to make the best decision we can. So. I'm going to make what sounds like, or probably is, a political observation. Um, theoretically, when the Board of Fish and the Board of Game was created by the legislature, the idea was that these boards would not be um, politically connected in any way, and I'm not talking about parties. I'm talking about uh, supporting groups and that kind of stuff. There's supposed to be seven independent thinkers on each board making their decisions based on their background and how they see the world should operate. That's the theory. Um, the reality is that it doesn't always happen that way. Uh, so you want to, as Israel pointed out, you want to know folks' background because it might help you figure out a good way to approach that person to understand what it is you would like to see done. Uh, another quick example, at, I believe it was the last board meeting three years ago, uh, a lady that w worked with Stefan in the public relations here at the borough had, uh, I believe it was newspaper background, working with the lady that was on the board at the time. And uh, this particular board member didn't appear to be too receptive to some of the ideas from the Northern District until Patty sat down and connected with her. And they started talking about commonalities. And then all of a sudden, this lady was much more willing to listen to what commissioners had to say. And uh, th those types of things, theoretically, not supposed to happen, if you will, but that's the reality. We're all human beings. We all relate to each other differently. And so j just kind of keep that in mind. And that's a good reason, as Israel and other folks pointed out, to go meet the board members on a break chat with them a little bit, find out what their background is, specifically if you want to ask, tell them what yours is, why you support this, why you don't, because it's, it's all about human interaction to a very great extent. Biology plays a big part, but the human interaction is probably every bit as prominent. So thank you, I think to sum that up is all politics are local, that means talking. So uh, I would like to thank everyone for coming. Uh, certainly we're not chasing you out. We have the posters, we have coffee, we have sign up. When I ask uh, our, our VIPs to kind of hang around and talk to people, I would like to thank our Fish and Wildlife Commission members. Uh, they work incredibly hard. Uh, just as an example, Chair Mike Wood was, spoke at the assembly last night. He was on a radio interview this morning at eight and he's here tonight and he lives in, well, off the road system in Talkeetna. So, I, you know, those are amazing things. Larry was here for two media interviews this afternoon. Uh, our assembly members uh, work incredible hours. And I, I just, I, I'm just thankful for all the public servants, the Board of Fisheries uh, members. They really are working hard to help 
people, and they need to hear from you so they can help you. So anyways, I'd like to thank you for coming tonight. Please feel free to get a cup of coffee, sign up, get something, and chat. So thank you very much, and safe drive home. Thank you. Right. Good. My name is Jim Sykes. I'm planning to go to the Board of Fish meeting because our, our Susitna Yetna system fish are really depressed. And we need to make them happy by making more fish. And uh, I'm too stupid to catch them with a rod and reel, but I do dip net. And I think it would be great if we could dip net fish because it's something we could do here. But whatever you have in our region, things have gone so low, whether you have a bait shop, a grocery store, a B&B, &B, if you fish yourself, if you depend on food, if you run a boat for people, whatever it is that's related to our fish and making sure that we restore these runs so that there can actually be more fish for everybody here in the rivers and in the stream, come to the Board of Fish, tell your story, and bring your friends because it's really important that everybody gets a chance to help make this very public decision in one of the biggest meetings in the state of Alaska. So I hope you'll join us. The meeting starts on Friday. The public testimony is uh, Saturday and Sunday the 8th and 9th, and the meeting lasts for another 11 days after that. Hi, my name is Israel Payton. I'm a member of the State of Alaska Board of Fisheries, and we have the Upper Cook Inlet meeting coming up on February 7th. And if you want your voice to be heard, I would encourage you to come out and say what you think needs changed or doesn't need changed. We want to hear from you. Hope to see you there. They say the longest journey begins with a single step. I'm a marathoner. I run 800 strides per mile for 26 miles, but I know the first step is getting out the door, and the first step in influencing the Board of Fisheries and getting more fish back to the Masu is coming to the Board of Fisheries meeting in Anchorage and testifying. It matters. Take that step. Thank you. And I'm Mike Wood. I'm the president. I'm the chair of the commission, and I'm just asking you to get out of bed early in the morning, drive all the way down to Anchorage, and sit around until you can testify and tell them your personal story. Why it's so important for you to be able to put fish in your freezer. Thanks so much. Bye. Uh, hi, my name is Bruce Ognowski, and I am really interested in fish and the Board of Fish meeting that's coming up uh, this weekend. We need sport fishermen's support for all the proposals that are out there. Um, if you're not there to represent yourself, we're not going to get what we really want for the fishing game, or from the fishing game, which is actually more fish in the rivers. So please come to the meeting. Thank you.